You want me to say my first? All right. My first piece that I'm going to perform is sort of a comedic monologue. It can be interpreted either way. It's by George Bernard Shaw, written in 1903. My character's name is Tanner, and he's trying to convince his friend that both men and women are evil. You, Tabby, are an artist. That is, you have a purpose as unscrupulous and as absorbing as a woman's purpose. You see, the true artist will let his wife starve and his children go barefoot and his mother drudge after his living lay into his 70s rather than work at anything but his art. To women, he is half vivisector, half vampire. He gets into intimate relationships them, to know them, and to study them, and to strip the mass of convention from them. He persuades them that they may do this for their own sake, whilst really he does it for his. He steals the mother's milk and blackens it to make pinches in, to scoff at her and glorify ideal women with. And he pretends to spare her the pangs of childbirth so that he may have that tenderness of belong right to her children. Since marriage began, it has been known that the artist man is a bad husband, but he is worse. He is a liar, a hypocrite, a bloodsucker, and a cheat. For perish the race where there are a thousand women, if only the sacrifice of them enabled him to act Hamlet better, or to write a greater play, or a deeper poem, or more profound philosophy. For Mark you, Tabby, the artist's work is to show us ourselves as we really are. And anyone who adds just a jot of such knowledge to this creates a new mind and shows anyone who creates a new man. In the rage of all that creation, he is as ruthless and as dangerous to her as she is to him. And all the more fascinating. And it is all the more dangerous in your situation because in your romanticist can't they love one another. Uh, this next piece is Mickey B. Uh, I'm being, I'm going to perform the role of Macduff, and he's about to be told that his family has been slaughtered. Oh, and uh, you told me to start from a better place because I just exploded last time. Okay. So it's starting from where um, I'm, I, I'm basically trying to convince Brian. I'm trying to remember his name, the character's name, but Brian that Ross. Ross, that it's not a good idea to go to war. And I think it transitions better. Be nice and loud. I think it transitions better because it shows how at first he didn't want to go to war and now he does. Okay, bring it. Let us rather hold fast to the sword and destroy our downfall and birth and like good men. Each new morn and each new widow's howl, each new orphan's cry. That resounds as a strike the face of Scotland and yelled out like syllables of dollar. I am not treacherous, but I have lost my hopes. See, there is no evil more damned than Macbeth. Right. Scotland, Scotland, fit to govern. Thy royal father was the most sainted king, and the queen that bore thee, often upon her knees, then on her feet, died every day that she lived. But such things is hard to reconcile. Look, and see who comes. My Vajanta cousin, welcome hither. How does my wife? And all my children? Be not the niggets of your speech. How goest? If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. I must be from this. My wife killed too. He had no children. All my pretty chickens, did you say all? How can all my pretty chickens in there, damn it? One fell swoop. I shall do so, but if I also feel as a man, 
cannot remember such things that were more precious to me. Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee, not that I am, not for those merits, but for mine. Thou slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Russell T. Davis in around 1997-ish. My note I want to say in your first piece, have really good diction. Diction. Your second piece you know very well. Good uh, job. Yeah. The, uh, it's Clarity. Making, it's making me. Um, uh, my first piece, I was wondering, would I get docked? Because in the play, I've read the play already, which is great because now I know it. Uh -huh. um, my character is not what I thought he was at first. He's a big burlesque sort of. Um, okay, my, the burlesque. Character, you mean burly? Burly, Wait, yeah, burly. burly. I'm, I'm getting the wrist mix up. But um, he's a big and manly type of man. But I want to play him as how I played him. And he also, um, he's serious in the beginning, and he sort of becomes comical towards the middle. But he's friends with his character, which is why I sort of sat him next to me and okay. ran off. Um, but I thought, would, if I'm not... That, You're fine. You're okay. Fine. I'm just interpreting it. Yeah, just know that you would have to really step up and play that role. All right, third piece. This one is Doctor Who. It's the first episode of the ninth... Uh, uh, season? No, the ninth Doctor. Ninth, ninth Doctor. Yeah, the ninth generation. Um, in this scene, he's trying to tell Rose that there's more to life than just, you know, watching TV and eating chips. Um, and he really wants to get across to her that uh, life is more than what she thinks it is. Interesting. I don't think he's gonna need to talk about it. Do you know what we were saying? about the earth revolving around the sun. It's like when you're first a kid and they tell you that the earth is spinning. And you just can't quite believe it because everything looks like it's standing so still. I'll tell you something. I can feel it. The turn of the earth, the ground beneath our feet, spinning at 1,000 miles per hour. And this planet, is hurtling at around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, and I can feel it. Falling through space, you and me, holding on to the skin of this tiny planet, if we let go. That is why I'm. You think it'll last. People, cars, concrete. One day, it's all gone. Even or sky. See, I lost my planet. There was a war and we lost. That's why I'm now. Forget me. How are your three?